Welcome to the Kulak Library. I'm Professor Steve Potter. I'm a brain scientist who is now doing making full time and I enjoy teaching Maker Mondays here at the Kulak Library's Makerspace. So I'll show you around. Today I'll introduce you to the 3D printers at the library. The library Makerspace has two 3D printers you can use to turn your ideas into tangible objects you can keep. The Ultimaker 2 and the Snapmaker. The Snapmaker is actually a three-purpose machine. In addition to 3D printing, it can also be configured to do laser etching or CNC milling, which I'll describe in separate videos. The best place to start to get inspired about what's possible with 3D printing is thingiverse.com. There you'll find over 2 million free printable 3D models of just about anything you can imagine. You can find your favorite action figures and characters, puzzles of all sorts, fidget toys, and many useful tools and gadgets. For example, I built my mostly printed CNC machine from files I downloaded from Thingiverse and then printed on my 3D printer. You can use your favorite 3D modeling software, such as Tinkercad or Fusion 360, to design something from scratch or modify someone else's design. Once the model is how you like it, just export it as an STL file. That's the standard format for 3D models which can be ported into software that prepares them for 3D printing, which is called the Slicer. Fusion 360 is a full-featured 3D modeling and design program, which includes all sorts of tools like rendering, animation, simulation, manufacturing. Uh, you can pretty much do anything you ever wanted, and it's free to makers. For a more beginner-friendly experience, though, I recommend Tinkercad, which can be run from your browser from Tinkercad's website, and you can design all sorts of shapes from these basic shapes and then altering them the way you want them until you get the design you like. Once you have the design how you like it, you can export it as an STL file. The Ultimaker 3D printer folks have made it quite easy to use their machine because they have created this program called Cura which is the program that you use to take a 3D file that you found on Thingiverse or perhaps you created and you slice it and create commands for the 3D printer. Let's go through an example using Benchy the Tugboat. This was designed by creativetools.se to be a so-called torture test or a benchmark for testing 3D printers because it has features that are difficult to print well, such as tiny text, overhangs, and bridges. I use it to test out different types of filaments I have at home. I see how strong they are by trying to break the chimney off. You can see some missing chimneys here. The most common type of filament for 3D printing is PLA, or polylactic acid. This is actually made from corn and is biodegradable. There are other filaments that are more flexible or reinforced with carbon fibers for more strength, and they come in a huge variety of colors, including transparent and metallic. We have silver PLA loaded on the Ultimaker. And I'm going to go up to File, open a project that I had previously had opened, and that is called Benchy. An STL file is a generic 3D model. If I double click on that, if all goes well, you'll see the Benchy appear. And by wheeling the roller on the mouse, you can zoom in on it. And the next thing to do is choose various parameters. It's good, probably good when you're getting started to just choose the defaults. So this first number has to do with how thick the layers are that are being printed. So they're 0.15 of a millimeter right now. The thicker it is, the faster it will go. The infill has to do with the hollow space inside of the model. It will put some extra plastic in there to make it more sturdy. 
So you can choose how much extra plastic and 20% is a good number to start with. If you wanted to go faster, you could choose say 10% instead. The next thing to do is to hit the button called slice. And that's when the software goes through and figures out how each layer will be printed in this thing. When it's done slicing, it'll tell you something about how long it will take to print. And if that seems like way too much, you can reduce the infill percentage. You could increase the thickness of each layer, or you can do a few other things to change that. So the next step is to save this sliced file to an SD card. So I've got an SD card plugged into this little card reader here, which is plugged into the USB port of the computer. Save to removable drive. And you're pretty much done with Cura at that point because this machine operates autonomously without the use of the computer. It's enclosed in a plexiglass box with a little lock on it here. And it's a good idea while you're using it to keep that door shut keep any curious fingers from reaching inside because there are at least two things that can hurt you here. The bed can get very hot. It can get about up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to burn you very quickly. So you definitely don't want to touch the bed anytime that it's hot. And it will show you on this little screen here what temperature it is. But even more dangerous is the nozzle that extrudes the plastic. So this little brass thing here where the molten plastic comes out, if I were to touch that, I would instantly get burned if this were uh, printing right now, or even if it had been printing recently. So you wanna keep your fingers away, especially from the nozzle and from the bed. And then of course, there's all of these belts and gears and stuff. Uh, you could get your fingers pinched and severely injured if you had your hands in the way of it while it was moving. It's a good idea whenever it's working, close the door and lock it and uh, leave it locked until it's completely finished. There is a, a possibility to pause the print by pushing the jog wheel here. Okay, so I'm gonna take the SD card that has the model that I want to print and stick it in the slot here. Push it all the way in so it just barely sticks out of the slot. Before you hit print, you might want to check whether you have the right material setting. So you jog the scroll wheel over till that's lit up and then click on it. And what we see is that we're gonna select PLA and you can see that the nozzle, for a brief moment there, it said that the nozzle was gonna be 210 degrees Celsius, which is very hot. And the bed will be 60 degrees Celsius. So that's what we want. We hit okay. And then we go back by hitting return. And now we select print and it's reading the card and it looks to see what files are there. There's only one, but it's a good idea to remember the name of the file that you want to print in case there's more than one thing on the card that somebody has already printed. And when you click go, the thing kicks to life and starts heating things up. It'll take a while, probably at least five minutes to warm everything up. Here we have the two benches printed with two different nozzles. The one on the left was printed with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. The one on the right was printed with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The one on the right took about two hours to print and the one on the left took about half an hour, less than half an hour to print. The Snapmaker 3D printer is different than the Ultimaker in the sense that it stays connected to the computer the whole time and is controlled by the computer. Most people will be controlling it from this app called Snapmaker Lubon. And there you see the Benchy, and you can spin it around, look at it from different angles, and you can set all of the parameters about how you want to print. 
I recommend just choosing the default. To turn it on, you switch that switch back there down. And this little box controller should light up. And before you start printing, you should take this liquid to make it stick to the bed better and wet the surface of the bed. As you can see, there's a lot of scope for creativity with 3D printing. And that's just one of the maker tools of the Kulak Library's makerspace. I hope to see you there soon.